How can I ever learn the alphabet? Aleph, Beta, Gimo, Alpha, Beta, Gamma. How can I learn the alphabet? <laughs> Hi, I'm Doug, and I want to encourage you in studying the biblical languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. When it comes to studying the biblical languages, you know that in order to read them, you need to learn the alphabet associated with that language. For Hebrew and Aramaic, it's the same alphabet. For Greek, it's a different alphabet, of course. If you come from a culture where you learned to read and write with an alphabet-based system, you already know how to do what you need to do for acquiring the alphabet in these biblical languages. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But it's important to note that the biblical languages, there's usage of the alphabet, not only for your standard reading and writing of the text, but there's some creative uses as well. For example, uh, likely a mnemonic use of the alphabet with acrostic poems, particularly in the Hebrew Bible. You see them in Proverbs 31 the Book of Lamentations, Psalm 119, among other places. You even have a verse, at least one verse, if not more, of pangrams in the Old Testament and the New Testament, where you can find a passage, a verse, where every letter of the alphabet is being used. So those are some fun things you can check out as a student or show your students as an instructor to give them a little extra fun to enjoy learning the alphabet and even think of some practical and creative uses for it later. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Hebrew and Aramaic share the same alphabet. And that alphabet is now written with what we call the Aramaic square script, not the Paleo-Hebrew. So these two languages, two related Semitic languages, share the same alphabet, and they are written the same way in how we access them in the study of the biblical languages today. Now, if you get into paleography, you get into manuscript studies and so forth, you're going to need to learn some other scripts. But for starting out, you just need the Aramaic square script that's standard in your printed BHS and other resources like that. If your instructor directs, you may also need to learn cursive, or you may choose to learn cursive alongside the Aramaic square script. This is beneficial as well. It's a little different. There's some overlap, but at the most, you'll probably need to learn the square script and cursive, at the very least, the Aramaic square script. Now, you don't have to worry about a distinction between uppercase and lowercase letters with the Hebrew Aramaic alphabet. But in Greek, you do. You need to learn the uppercase Greek and the lowercase Greek letters. You'll find in the manuscript traditions, there are some manuscripts that are written completely in uppercase. There are some manuscripts that make heavy use of the lowercase. The uncials, the uppercase, and the minuscules, uh, the lowercase, are a couple of uh, ways they're referred to. But regardless, it's important to learn both the uppercase and lowercase when you are studying the Greek alphabet. Now, how do you learn these alphabets? If you're from an Indo-European background, Greek is probably going to come fairly quickly, at least in comparison to Hebrew, though if you are a Semitic language speaker or from a family of Afroasiatic languages, you may acquire that a bit more readily. But regardless, there are some techniques you can use with the Hebrew Aramaic and the Greek alphabets to be able to acquire them. And the three I prioritize are saying them, singing them, and writing them. You can say them over and over, just keep repeating them in sequence, going through the alphabet, getting those sounds of those letters in your head and in your muscle memory as well. Add to that the singing, or you could chant them. Many of us who grew up learning English as our first language learned to sing the alphabet to the tune of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, which is a folk song, and folk songs can often be adapted for use with the biblical languages as well. Some of us have used versions of that same song for one or more of the biblical language alphabets or songs, folk songs like Mama's Little Baby Loves Shortening Bread or Yankee Doodle. I had a Hebrew professor who had us have a contest with Yankee Doodle tune uh, with the Hebrew alphabet and to see who could sing it the fastest. And that's good because the faster you can sing it, the more fluent you are in it, and you've got the competition motivation going on there. As an instructor, I've had my students do the same, and I've challenged them as well. And don't tell anybody, but some of them even beat me 
some high schoolers beat me in singing the Hebrew alphabet one day. And I just cheer them on. I'm so happy for them. They're doing a great job. And I hope you too will sing the Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek alphabets. Now, not only is it helpful to say the alphabet and to sing the alphabet, but we should include writing the alphabet. Although it's true we won't be adding books of the Bible, composing some additional books that are going to go in the canon of Scripture, it is still helpful for us to form the letters. And it does something in our brain. We're going to be able to recognize them better. We'll also be able to appreciate the transmission history, most of which has involved manual copying by hand until the invention of the printing press and, of course, the advent of modern technology. For writing the alphabets, there are a lot of resources you can make use of. You can use apps with a touchscreen device uh, with a finger or stylus. You can use printed worksheets that you copy the pattern of forming the letters and use the, the lines that are provided for you to learn how to make the letters with those guides hanging them down from the top with the Hebrew Aramaic. After you've learned to form those well, it's really good to practice anytime you get a chance. So just take some scrap paper, perhaps while you're waiting for an appointment, you can go over and over and over them in sequence. If there's no one around or it won't bother anyone, perhaps you can say them out loud or sing them out loud while you're doing that too. The more senses you get involved with your learning, the better it is for your brain, the better it is for you to retain what you are learning. So when it comes to learning the alphabet, whether we're talking about learning the Hebrew Aramaic alphabet or the Greek alphabet, I hope you'll get started. Say it. Sing it. Write it. And then you'll be on your way for further study of the biblical languages. How can I learn the alphabet? Say it. Sing it. Write it.